welcome to our online global self-awakening retreat. This is day seven. Time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> Especially when you're having a good time. I was hanging out with a friend of mine yesterday and he was asking me about the retreat. And then uh, later on he mentioned, hey, do you want to go eat something for evening? And I was like, no, I I'm not going out any night. Every evening as the sun goes down, I go back to my place. and. Um, I need to be alone. I can't ac associate with anybody. I need to just stay in this place. I love it. It's powerful. I don't want the energy to leak out. I just want to be in my own space and drink this. And then he was asking me, like, what is the reaction of your people, participants? And how are you doing? And I was like, I am completely blissed out and very excited. I can't wait till the next day. So we come back together again and I get the reports from a lot of people that they feel the same way. So what I'm trying to share with you is that the feeling is mutual. The love the presence, this vastness of energy, that this vastness of the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme, it's literally beyond, beyond the mind's capability of understanding it. So it's never just one way, it's always both ways. The enthusiasm, the, the love, the presence that appears, it, it affects all of us simultaneously. It doesn't understand space or time because with some of you, we're like 10, 12,000 miles away. We have that miles, that distance between us, separating us. And our time are different. Some of you, it's 11, 12 o'clock at night in India, in Middle East. Uh, in Europe, it's eight, nine hours difference. East coast of the U.S. is three hours different. So, but it doesn't, this energy doesn't understand that. It doesn't care that there is time difference and there is distance between us. And we're in different continents and we're separated by an ocean. But it doesn't care. It it's beyond all of that, beyond these limitations. All one we need to do, all one needs to learn is to how to dive into and tap into the unified field of oneness to tap into it. And it's not a mental activity. Don't try to get this with your mind because in the beginning, originally, yes, you're listening, you're following, you're reading stuff, you're listening to the um, different videos, literature, but after a while, you simply 
by being quiet, you immediately discover that you're connected to the, to the field. And of course, through receiving trainings and certain kind of techniques, active meditations and guidance, it makes it a lot easier to recognize the space and tap into it as a lot of you in your life already done that. You have experienced this. You have had glimpses of it. You tapped into it. But since most of us are not properly guided and educated in this realm, we, even though you have touched this energy before many times, prior to our meeting or after we met, but most people don't know what has happened. So it, they refer to it as a divine experience, but they also are waiting for it to come back, hoping to get back into it, but they don't know how they can do it. The know-how is a different story. It's recognizing how I can walk this path back into this place that I did experience yesterday or last night or last week or last month, and I, I want it back. I want to go back there, but you don't know how to go back there. So that's where the training comes. And that's where the certain exercises, the guidance, the techniques we're using is to send you back into this place again. And one of the reasons I designed the Self-Awakening Mastery Workshop, which we're going to be doing it in three weeks, is to give you the proper tools and the techniques to be able to quiet your mind and elevate your vibration so you can access this field easily and eventually be able to maintain this level of vibrations to stay in this frequency so you can reside into your new level of consciousness that you have tapped into. So the training, the guidance, all of it is very important to send you back to this place. Now, the place, the space you go back into is not something you get, okay? So I have a lot of people and I've been there. I've been one of those people saying, oh, I got it. When I was in India with Master Punjaji, I got it. Or when I had my encounter with Osho, I got it, but I lost it. Zarathustra, I had it. I was there. I got it. I even was there for one month or two, and I was in this godly realm of higher consciousness. But then I left India, and I came back to the U.S., or I went to Europe, and I went back becoming a full-time mom or nurse or whatever, and I lost it. I went back to the world working. Well, the proper way of look understanding it is that this is not something you acquire and subsequently you cannot lose it. Anything you get, you acquire, you're going to lose. There's a possibility you lose it.